open. I don't see the candle. Okay. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our farewell hangout with the outgoing U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Ambassador Jean Kretz. Just to give you some information about him, very brief. Uh, he's a former uh, ambassador to Libya, former Deputy Assistant Secretary for Near East Affairs. You know, just to sum it up, he has a very rich, distinguished career uh, for many decades. Uh, he started out, this is a very beautiful aspect of him that most people probably do not know, as a Peace Corps volunteer in Afghanistan. Right. I mean, not many mm -hmm. um, um, uh, diplomats start of us. Um, Peace Corps volunteers uh, oh, from your are. country. No, there are. There are actually. There's a, quite a number. Yeah, it's a. It's a. I think we found over the years that it's a, a nice uh, uh, introduction to diplomatic life and life overseas. So, it's only natural that a lot of our uh, diplomats would um, uh, start from as a Peace Corps volunteer and then they make their way into uh, the foreign affairs community. Has that shaped you in any way? Um, well, I, I think for sure, it, 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 number one, it, it's a, I was in Afghanistan from 1975 to 1977. And, you know, you get to really see life at its grassroots level because you're not living in big residences and houses uh, like we do now. You're living really very close to the uh, people of the country. And uh, you really get it, uh, you find out what, what it is to be a foreigner among, uh, a, in a strange country. You find out what it's like to be an American and that you find out uh, how it is to, in effect, represent your country. So whether you do it as a, as a Peace Corps volunteer or as an ambassador, mm -hmm. you're still utilizing the same kind of, uh, of skills and, and, and presentation that you do. So I think that those people who have, um, who have started out as Peace Corps volunteers uh, have done very well because they really get a feeling for what's important when you go to a country uh, and that stays with you throughout the uh, your career. Okay. Now, when you come to Ghana, I mean, you find a lot of young people trying to volunteer. It is not um, something that is too common. I mean, mm -hmm. in the past, we had a lot of people who went into volunteering, but it seems to be waning with time. I mean, with uh, our founders birthday for instance some young people came together to do it a founder's day so they go out and help uh, citizens across the country mm -hmm. who need one sort of help or the other what would you say mm -hmm. to Ghanaians watching you right now or listening to you mm -hmm. about the essence of volunteering right well first let me start out by saying to our um, our muslim uh, uh, audience uh, mm -hmm. kul sana uh, ramadan karim here at the start of the the holy month of uh, ramadan um, I, first, uh, volunteerism is, is certainly a, a very uh, a crucial part of the American experience. And whether it's through the Peace Corps or the Teacher Corps or whether it's through uh, the Red Cross or whatever, we found that uh, the spirit of volunteerism in a society is an absolutely critical um, dimension okay. of the maturity uh, of that uh of that society, because if you go back to Judeo-Christian roots, uh, there's a very strong uh, sense of uh, of uh, helping thy neighbor, uh, you know, and, and to the golden rule even, mm -hmm. to uh, uh, treat others as you would have them treat you. So I would say that uh, to the extent that you're able to get internships or to find organizations where you can actually uh, volunteer and not only for the sake of money, money will always be there. When you, you know, uh, Peace Corps volunteers, for example, when they, they do it for a, a minimum amount of money, uh, when they get out, they get a job and they begin to earn. But I would say that uh, for the people that I know and certainly for myself, that the time that we spent volunteering, that is either working for free or working for a, just a, a minimum amount to, uh, you know, for food and shelter, uh, are the, the most, um, uh, the best uh, experiences that we have had. Um, like I said, money will always be there, but the experience that you get from doing something because you want to rather than because you need to is one that uh, really characterizes a, um, a society that's that, that really has uh, a caring attitude mm. toward the others. I've been in a lot of countries where, unfortunately, that, that does not exist, that spirit of um, of caring for thy neighbor, mm -hmm. taking care of people, uh, you know, contributing to charity. Uh, but in those countries where it does exist, it, it really is a very 
um, mark, uh, a very high mark of a, of a mature and caring society. Okay. How many countries have you visited? Would you know? Visited or yeah. lived in? Lived in, visited. I, I think countless. I've lived. I think I've lived in eight or ten, and I think I've visited probably around forty or fifty. Okay, so you've met different kinds of oh, people, absolutely. different yeah. cultures. Sure. Is that one particular one that really, really stood out for you? Oh, I, I look. I think over the span of a, a career uh, that I've had for thirty-four years, I've I, you know I've lived in China, I've lived in India, lived in Israel, lived in Syria, Ghana, Libya. Egypt, uh, uh, you know, several countries. Each each culture and each people uh, is distinct. Uh, each has its own way of living, its own kind of uh, foods, its own kind of beliefs. Uh, so I, I really can't point out that one is so so much more distinct than another. They all are are fascinating, and uh, every time you go to a different country, you you should appreciate that you will encounter a. Uh, a and uh, you'll encounter a people and a culture that will change you, as uh, the uh, the German poet uh, Goethe once said. Uh, when I go to a when I travel abroad, uh, I found out that I am the one who has changed rather than uh, anyone uh, myself doing any of the change. Right. So it's really it's a, each one has their own. Uh, wonderful characteristics. Okay, now let's focus on Ghana. I saw you the other day on TV as you went to the Flagstaff House to right. bid the president mm -hmm. farewell, and I said, "Oh, already? Yeah, time is up." Right. I hear you've been here for three years. Almost three years. Almost yeah. three mm -hmm. years. So yeah. when do you finally leave? Okay. Uh, I leave uh, next week. Next. Ne uh, oh, a week so from, soon. Yes, mm, okay. a week from Friday. All right. So let's talk about your stay here in Ghana. Sure. Uh, take me through. Did you travel the length and breadth of the country? I've pretty much been uh, most of the places in Ghana. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I've been to mostly. I try to uh, shape my travel outside of Accra uh, and gear it toward projects uh, that we're doing or events uh, in the country. So whether it's in Wa or whether it's Aksim, whether it's in Volta, whether it's in Tamale, uh, it's usually been geared uh, or focused on a, a a project that we're opening or an event. For example, a uh, uh, anti um, malaria day or um, an education uh, project. For example, when our Secretary of the Navy was here last year, we opened a, a school uh, to the east of Tamale. Uh, and so, uh, but I've, uh, I've tried to see as much of the country as possible and uh, I've, I've, I've done a pretty good job of it, I think. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any particular destination that happened to be your favorite in Ghana? Well, I'd have to say, um, let me think, uh, the area around Adha is very nice. Uh, Aksim, of course, uh, the but beaches? the northern, the beaches, of course, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the north, uh, the area outside of Tamale, which mm -hmm. I think is just beautiful, uh, the greenery and the, um, the 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 scenic beauty of the uh, village clusters around okay. there. I want to take you back to the presidency when you went to say goodbye, mm -hmm. uh, say goodbye to the president and yeah. the people of Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, president Mahama said, and I'm quoting him here, that Ghana-U.S. relations have mm -hmm. reached a higher level since you've been here never than never before. Um, I want us to focus on Ghana-US relations. Mm -hmm. How would you describe it if I asked you to use one word, one adjective? Well, I, I, at first I think the president was being very kind in saying that the, <laughs> he, they had reached a level that they had never done before. Yeah. We have always had uh, wonderful relations with Ghana. I mean, there have been periods of time where we may have had some differences of opinion about uh, international issues, etc. cetera. Uh, I think what each ambassador, as I told the uh, the president uh, during that time, I said, I, I think most of us uh, who are ambassadors measure our tenure uh, in two ways. Number one, have we, to the best of our ability, represented uh, our country, our people, our institutions um, uh, during our tenure? And second, have we contributed to the uh, to the benefit of the country that we've been at. Mm -hmm. And so by those two measures, uh, you know, I think I've done pretty well, but I think our mission as a whole has done very well. If you want to characterize the the state of us Ghana relations, I, I'd have to say solid. Wow. For one adjective. Uh, for one adjective, I, you I, I, go there's, for solid. there's so many more that yeah. I, I could use, but to, to, to use one, I, I'd say they're solid and they're warm, they're close. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're, they're uh, based on a mutual respect, uh, mutual shared values, mm. and a, a real um, warmth of feeling uh, from both sides of the Atlantic. Okay. Now, the U.S. undertakes a lot of projects in Ghana. I mean, yeah. I'm talking about U.S.-funded projects. Mm -hmm. um, 
of course, as you've been here, you've launched some, uh, you've commissioned some, you've done a lot. Mm -hmm. um, which of these projects would you say have had the most impact on Ghanaians? And I want to focus on the north, the three northern regions, mm. because they are described as the most deprived regions in the country. I think in the health field, we've done, we've had dramatic impact. Um, uh, but a lot of times, uh, our projects are interconnected. So, for example, uh, we've done a lot of uh, work in helping farmers in the north to uh, improve the yield on their land so that they have better seed, uh, they have uh, 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 some support in, in helping them uh, raise their crops, and then in, in, in getting those uh, crops to market for a better price. Um, that, in turn, uh, impacts on their ability, for example, to, to get good health care and to get education uh, for their uh, children. Uh, so I would say that uh, the health uh, uh, aspect of our work has, has been very positive in terms of malaria control. I watched the malaria control process from start to finish, uh, from the point at which um, you ask the uh, villagers to uh, remove all the goods from their, their shelters, their huts, their huts, whatever they live in. Uh, then we spray, uh, and then they, uh, they use the mosquito nets, uh, et cetera. And, you know, when you see the improvement, number one, in the uh, the levels of infant mortality, that is that children below the level of five, the, they used to die by the, you know, a huge, uh, huge percentage. Now we see that with those uh, malaria eradication uh, eradication programs, the, um, the mortality rate is dr drastically down. We also uh, focus a lot on our, for example, in our agriculture, uh, on, on, on nutrition. So that we note that at times the Ghanaian diet is is very full of carbohydrates. Uh, for young babies and mothers, you you need a mix. You also need protein. So we introduce uh, more protein into the uh, to the diet. So those kinds of projects are really uh, I found to be the most um, gratifying and satisfying because they really do uh, uh, contribute directly. Uh, to the saving of, uh, of Ghanaian lives, which is really, uh, it doesn't get much better than that uh, for diplomats and for uh, for programs that the United States taxpayers support. Okay. And just recently, USAID gave uh, the biggest boost, I must say, to education. You want mm -hmm. to comment on education? Yeah, this is a, a program, uh, $71 million uh, for, the ne for the next five years, where uh, we, along with the Ghanaian Ministry of Education and Education Service, plus some uh, private uh, sector implementers, will work to improve the capability of the Ghanaian youth uh, kids in the early grades uh, to um, uh, to learn to read in their uh, mother tongue and then proceed uh, on to uh, a secondary language, English or whatever. Uh, this is not to say that we're excluding English right at the start. We're just, I think the idea behind this, as I understand it, is that the, the, that the, uh, the data reveals that those children who learn to read in their native language first can make the leap better to a second language once they have all those concepts and they they get to see that they can read uh, i'm uh, I, I trust the science and i, I think this project is really going to be a, a fantastic one it's geared toward uh, 2.8 million uh, ghanaian children so these between the health and the education we really have done uh, uh, a lot of good in the country. Okay, very soon I'll be going for some of the questions that have come to us um, online. Um, before I even go on to the other questions that I have for you, there's a very interesting one here uh, from Stephen Atropia who says, what steps does the U.S. government take to ensure that financial aid given to the Ghanaian government is used for its intended purpose? And it's a very relevant question it is. Mm -hmm. looking at uh, all the corruption issues that have come up mm -hmm. in this country and have dominated right. uh, the headlines. Mm -hmm. How do you seek accountability mm -hmm. for the CDs you put or the dollars you put into right. this economy? Uh, in in some ways, we're very different from some of the other uh, countries that uh, uh, provide aid to Ghana. For example, they do it through budget support. That is, um, they make financial contributions to the government agencies and then allow them to uh, allocate the money. Our system is very different. We do it. Uh, we don't just give money directly uh, to the uh, uh, Ghanaian government. We give it. Uh, we we do projects, uh, which are then uh, the money is allocated to the project. Uh, the project implementers work with the government, uh, but we have very stringent 
follow-up requirements and criteria uh, to make sure that uh, all of the conditions of the particular project are being met and that all the goals are being met and that all the money is used for what it's intended for. So I think on that score, and this is something that I've said even when I've been to the United States and talked to the American public, that uh, what I have found here in Ghana is that uh, uh, the, the American taxpayer dollar is is put to very good use mm -hmm. and the results are, are concrete and they're tangible and one can see them wherever we go in the country. That's a very positive comment for Ghana. But yeah. I want us to stay on the issue of corruption because um, when Transparency International releases its Corruption Perception Index, mm -hmm. um, of course Ghana did quite well, marginally well uh, this mm -hmm. year, but we are still not getting the points that one would call satisfactory. Mm -hmm. um, you've been around for three years, and so you have seen a lot of the corruption reports that have come up. Mm -hmm. What is your general thought on mm -hmm. the fight against corruption in this country? Do you see enough political will to fight corruption? Well, it seems recently, I think, well, that the, the government from the, from the president on down has made a very public uh, uh, campaign uh, to, to really uh, start to uh, to move against uh, corruption in the country. So I think from the government levels, at least there seems to be the willingness. Um, I think there's also got to be a, um, uh, a, a, a similar movement on the part of the grassroots of the country. That is, I mean, we know for a fact that uh, Ghanaian citizens uh, in their daily lives from time to time are faced with uh, some form of corruption, whether it's a a bribe to a, a, a government official to get just a normal driving license or whether it's a customs or whether being stopped by the police. We know for a fact that, that these things happen. So you have direct, you as a Ghanaian citizen have a direct, uh, a direct experience with this on a daily basis, whether it's for five CDs or 10 CDs. It doesn't matter uh, whether it's five CDs or 20 million CDs for a contract that uh, people believe is is being uh, offered in the wrong way. So I think that if you have a, a, a commitment by the government, which I think there is uh, from President Mahama on down, and if you can begin to get a grassroots movement from Ghanaians themselves who experience, quote unquote, corruption uh, mm -hmm. in its largest and small sense, uh, I think you can begin to make uh, uh, inroads into, into helping improve the situation. Look, every country that I've been in, and certainly in my own country, corruption is a problem. We're not free of it. Uh, you know, wherever there's money, uh, wherever there's things that need to be done, wherever people have needs, there's going to be uh, corruption. But uh, as you said, it, it, it takes the willingness of the government and a commitment by the government, but also a, government, uh, a commitment by the people of the country. And I think that that's where Ghana really needs to focus its efforts uh, is creating kind of a, a, a civil base uh, or a grassroots campaign where Ghanaians themselves say we have we've had enough, we don't want this anymore, and we want change. Okay. Another thing that I find really interesting is when President Obama visited Ghana, and uh, in one of his speeches, he said, and I want to quote him, that Africa does not need strong men, they right. need strong institutions. Yes. And it's actually become quite a favorite mantra for a lot of African mm -hmm. leaders when they're talking to the issue of right. corruption. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure in one way or the other, you've had a chance to work with some Ghanaian institutions. Yes. Um, what would you say about strengthening these institutions in Ghana? Well, I think, first of all, the president was right on the mark. Uh, there's no doubt that um, uh, institutions are what uh, make a country. And look, I mean, Ghana, you're used to institutions. You've had six successful handovers of power at the presidential level uh, uh, in the last several elections. You are among the most stable uh, democracies of, of Africa and in fact of, of the world. So when it comes to institutions, you have experience with them. Uh, the issue uh, then becomes, okay, uh, institutions are absolutely critical. So that's why um, we uh, have also focused uh, a lot of our uh, funding here in, the, in in Ghana on building institutional uh, capacity, because uh, at the end of the day, when the when the minister of a particular ministry leaves because of an election or for whatever reason, mm -hmm. you have a whole bureaucracy that stays, and that bureaucracy has to be imbued uh, with the culture, with the values of the people in the government uh, of Ghana. So for example, we are now working with the, um, with, through a grant from the Department of Justice uh, to help uh, the, the Attorney General 
build up a, a, a better prosecutorial ability so that when the police uh, do an investigation, they will have a very competent uh, 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 office in the, uh, in, the, in the Justice Department with the Attorney General that they can go to that will follow up and bring those uh, cases to, co uh, to court. Uh, this is something, you know, uh, in terms of, for example, uh, financial issues. Uh, we've worked very hard to uh, introduce a a a, a data-based, uh, computer-based uh, system into the Department of Finance and throughout the other uh, government agencies, so that when you when payments are made to the agency, they're put on paper, uh, and that they're very transparent and very. Um, uh, very clear. This is what's e-government, uh, electric government. So uh, uh, institution building is absolutely um, the center uh, of focus, I think, for a lot of what we do. And um, I think the president, when he came here, was just trying to say that, yes, it's not a question of men or women mm -hmm. or leaders. It is a question of the institutions that you build. And the stronger that your institutions are, so that you know when you go to the customs that a box that comes in from the United States the charge is, is 25 CDs. It's 25 CDs all the time. <laughs> exactly. It's not 50 CDs one day, it's not 10 <laughs> the other, but it's an institutional at its at its most basic level. Right. You, you caught up with the former president, Jerry John Rawlings, didn't you? Yes. Uh, recently. Yes. Now, um, he talked about multi-party democracy, and he said the U.S. should take another look at multi-party democracy. What was going through your Head at that time when he he said the U.S. should take another look at multi-party democracy. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. I think we were just talking about um, uh, the you know the does the current setup, for example, even in the United States of of only two parties, mm -hmm. as there is in Ghana, offer uh, uh, the people a, a, a real choice. Um, we throughout our history in the United States, certainly we we basically had a, a two-party system. Uh, but now you see that uh, there have been uh, third-party uh, independent candidates, um, you know, at various times throughout our history, and we'll see what's happening right now. There's a, for example, a very um, uh, what appears to be a very popular challenger, uh, Senator Bernie Sanders, who's challenging uh, former Secretary of State uh, Hillary Clinton for the Democratic presidential nom uh, nomination. And while he may not win, he may have an impact in terms of. Um, uh, moving uh, Mrs. Clinton's positions perhaps a little bit uh, to the left where she, she would not normally have been, but this is the impact of an independent party that has a, a influence that may not win the big election, but wants to have at least some say in terms of the policies of the major candidates. So I think for uh, if you have multi-party uh, uh, elections, which I think was what, what the former president was mm -hmm. getting at, you offer the voters more of a choice. And so that if you're unhappy with the, the practices of one or mm -hmm. both of the parties, you, you have a choice. And it, it's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a good opinion. I mean, it's a okay. good view. Okay. I want to move on to another issue, youth employment or sure. youth unemployment. There's a very interesting question here from uh, Charles Ewusi, who is asking, in what way is the United States coming alongside Ghana in order to help bring up the youth of the country into positions of economic, entrepreneurial, or leadership opportunities? Yeah, well, I think on the economic side, uh, we certainly um, uh, are very active uh, in helping the government uh, and assisting the government in terms of uh, uh, boosting its 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 macroeconomic uh, capability. For example, we were very very active in in um, in discussions uh, with respect to the recent IMF uh, mm -hmm. uh, program, which is totaling uh, over 900 million dollars, and which we hope uh, will help restore uh, Ghana to a, a very sound uh, financial uh, basis. Uh, that in itself uh, is a very positive uh, uh, factor because. Uh, once the economy begins to show uh, improvement, you will job creation will be uh, a a consequence of that. So I think on that score, and in several other areas on the economic sphere, uh, we're 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 helping because that brings investment to the country, it brings um, uh, you know uh, infrastructure projects, and that that creates jobs. On the question on the entrepreneurial side, mm -hmm. uh, we've been very active uh, in, in this sphere. Um, we uh, we try to uh, made up our companies or try to encourage our companies to uh, to uh, to find youth wherever they can and to train them perhaps uh, send them abroad for um, 
uh, to learn a, a different job. We have a, a project, uh, at least one project, from the um, university, uh, Stanford University, which has set up a, 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 an institution here to draw in um, the people from different uh, companies and then teaches them uh, skills and how to operate in the uh, global uh, environment. Uh, in terms of leadership, well, the best program we have going right now is the Young African Leaders Initiative, YALI, uh, which President uh, Obama initiated and which is now in really high high gear. Last year we had 500 um, uh, African uh, youth, I'll call them, but they're, you know, they're from ages 22 to 40 uh, who went to the United States for training, uh, and they, they attended universities, they learned about our government, mm -hmm. uh, they met with the president, uh, they, they uh, were able to address their own leaders in this forum. Uh, and this year we're, we're, we're shooting for the about the same number, but next year we're shooting for a number of about a thousand. Uh, in terms of so this is a very, very uh, creative and, and dramatic and uh, energetic program that I think will really be uh, an important part. President uh, Obama's legacy uh, toward Africa. So I think on each of those three, on youth, etc., we are um, we're trying to do as much as we can. But I think it's job creation, uh, it's these leadership uh, activities, and it's also stimulating um, the ability of uh, small entrepreneurs to to get going in a business with some kind of help. Yeah, and I'm sure in your um, um, meetings with young people in Ghana, the issue of unemployment has come up really high. Sure. Um, the last time in my office, it was a very funny comment in the newsroom, and we were watching the BBC, and the headline said, the U.S. economy has added this number of jobs mm -hmm. in the month of May, right. when they came for June. Mm -hmm. And then somebody passed a very, should I say silly, but it's a real comment, and mm -hmm. said, oh, when are we going to see this in Ghana? You know, Ghana economy adds this number of jobs. Yeah. It's a problem, youth right. unemployment in Ghana. No, I, I, well, I, it's not a question just of youth unemployment in Ghana. It's youth unemployment uh, throughout the uh, emerging world. I mean, we you go to the Middle East or, or Asia or South America, it, it, it is a critical problem, even in Europe. I mean, unemployed youth are, are uh, is, is a problem. And each of these societies, each of these countries, has to find the, the means to deal with it. The best means, I think, that we have found and that's been uh, tested throughout is job creation. And that means uh, opening up your economies, bringing in investment, uh, uh, increasing the opportunities for education. The, the the path toward uh, reducing youth unemployment is not uh, a mystery. Uh, there, there are well-defined steps that governments uh, uh, need to take. Granted, they can be very difficult and they can be very expensive, but uh, once a, I think once a country's economy is in good shape, uh, the rest follows. And that's why I'm very hopeful that uh, as uh, over the next 6 to 12 months, as uh, these different forces in Ghana begin to come together, that the um, the economic situation will uh, improve, and that in turn will lead to um, a reduction in uh, youth employment uh, unemployment. I think the the government is well aware of this. Any government that is not aware of this particular problem, and this goes throughout the world, uh, is in uh, is in danger really because uh, it is a burgeoning problem, and uh, the world uh, working together really has to has to deal with it. Okay. Now, um, you mentioned. Um, you talked about the IMF bailout. Yes. Um, before we went to the IMF, there were a lot of narratives and commentary about why Ghana should or shouldn't go to mm -hmm. the IMF for a bailout. Um, since that, we were given the go-ahead that indeed right. we're going to get this amount of money, mm -hmm. almost a billion. Um, the narrative has changed a bit. Some claiming that we went to the IMF because of prudent or should I say mismanagement of the economy. Others claiming that well uh, at, at the point where we found ourselves an economy where the city for instance mm -hmm. isn't doing too well against the dollar, the international trading currency, there was a need for us to go. Were you disappointed as ambassador to Ghana to hear that Ghana, considering all the resources that we have in this country, mm -hmm. had to go to the IMF for a well, I, I, if you take a look at the situation prior to the uh, to the approach uh, to the IMF, uh, you know the, the economy was was suffering some some fairly big challenges. I mean, uh, uh, 
Uh, we had, you know, a fall in uh, gold prices. We had a drop in uh, cocoa production. Oil and gas was not coming uh, online as, as quickly as it could. And you also had the single spine uh, payments, uh, you know, for the wages, which I think was unexpected in, in to have to deal with that in such a way. So um, I think the government... Uh, we, you know, we, the government was was very good about consulting with we and our other partners to talk about what the uh, problems were that they were facing and what they needed to do. They came up with some solutions, uh, which were very good, but which, just given the magnitude of the problem, didn't go far enough in addressing the problem. So when they decided to go to the IMF... Are you talking about the homegrown solutions? Homegrown they, solutions, right. Uh, and I think that was a, a very mature conclusion on their part that they had done as much as they could but it, it, uh, it the magnitude of the problem was such that they needed some some more support and at that point they decided to go to the IMF um, we, we did not have a view one way or the other whether it was good or bad it, this was a government decision but uh, once they decided to do it we supported it and I think that at the end of the day when we look down at the um, when we look at the when we look at Ghana's situation uh, six months to a year from now I think we're going to be able to say that it was a good decision and that uh, the situation here um, has improved because of that decision. Okay, um, just to acknowledge the people we have online at present, uh, Yao Kuwanu is online and also Alfred Ajabing also online. Hi there. Um, we'll Hi. be coming to you pretty soon for your questions. Uh, but before we come in, I'll just go for one more question um, that came in early on. Um, Angel Kuneli says that I have seen a lot of projects the U.S. has undertaken in Ghana. I just want to know, in his view, um, what he makes of the sad stories we are hearing about Africans trying to get into Europe. And uh, I'm sure yeah. she's referring to all these accidents we've right. seen on the Mediterranean. Yeah. It's quite heartbreaking, very yeah. pathetic. Yeah. Um, would you want to pass uh, one comment on that? Well, I saw this, comment? yeah, I saw this uh, problem when I was in Libya before because... Um, uh, Libya was one of, is one of, has been one of the jumping off points for this kind of uh, forced migration uh, from Africa to Europe. It's a very sad and tragic situation. I mean, the roots of the problem go back to the fact that, uh, that we were talking about before, youth unemployment, mm -hmm. uh, the economic situations in these different countries that compel a person and a family to take uh, these horrible risks uh, just to get to Europe in order to get a job to be able to support the families. Uh, I think that we've uh, there's a there's an international approach right now uh, to work with the concerned countries in the region. Number one, to make sure that those people are uh, taken to safe places, that they're taken out of danger and taken out of the hands of these uh, uh, these uh, criminal elements mm -hmm. who are who are taking money and then then don't care about the people themselves. Uh, so I think that's number one that we are working, uh, especially with our European uh, countries. Uh, to try to find a, a process that will uh, deal with the immediate impact of health, uh, safety, food, um, you know, of these uh, people who are traveling. And second is uh, I think that we need to undertake a, an international effort to get to the roots of the problem. Why are tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of, uh, of uh, people on the African continent reduced to the, the point where they really believe that they have, to, they have nothing to lose and that they have to undertake uh, this kind of perilous voyage and that gets to the kind of issues that we've been talking about how do you get these economies moving and working so that people have a stake in the country and that they they have a job and they can provide for their families which is all that they want to do mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll go to um, one of our friends online. I'll start with you, Yao Kuonu. Uh, Yao, if you have a question, uh, we are ready to listen to you. Yeah, sure. Um, first of all, I want to say kudos to Ambassador Kreitz. Thank you. Shall we give it up for Ambassador? Yay! <laughs> we can give it up more. Give it up yes, more, we yeah. We can give it up some more. <laughs> I know. Um, it's great to be joining you from Vienna, um, where I'm going through a training program right now. But I, I wanted to ask, so on, on a lighter note, Ambassador Kretz, would you consider that USA beating Ghana in the just-ended World Cup or last year's World Cup was a result of your great work? And, and, and how, how would you tie that in with sports diplomacy in Ghana? I don't know how to begin to answer that question except to say that I was in Libya 
the last time that Ghana uh, beat the United States, and the uh, uh, you know the pride and the joy and the uh, we had a lot of the Libyan staff, uh, Ghanaian staff, and that worked in our embassy, and the pride and joy that the uh, Libyans uh, that the Ghanaians had on for the Black Stars was really uh, quite amazing. Uh, when we came this year, uh, when we came last year to the World Cup, it was unfortunate that we had to play you so early on, and were it not for that first 25 seconds, uh, I think maybe the outcome would have been different. But at the end of the day, as I, I even told the president the other day, we gave you the best possible opportunity when we lost to Germany or tied them, <laughs> but you couldn't pull it off against Portugal. So, but from now on, I, I hope that we don't play you again. <laughs> Um, if we do, I'll I will vote, of course, for my home country. Uh, but I, if I see Ghana playing with anybody else, I definitely am going to uh, support them and hope that it, at some point Ghana will win the World Cup. And I, I think that's going to come at some point. Sure, sure, sure. And we are very grateful. Um, I wanted to say a big kudos and thanks for the good work you've done. It's been a pleasure working with you, and I thought that this is like a golden opportunity for me to express my personal, heartfelt, sincere gratitude um, to you for, for all the wonderful times and for the great strides that you have, you have made in Ghana. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Sure. Right. Yeah. It's interesting you brought up the issue of football. And the U.S., oh my, they're beating everybody. They beat Germany, they beat Netherlands the last time. And I was like, oh, hold on, where are they coming from? Concentrate on your basketball. <laughs> 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 well, I think they are doing something something different, and I think yeah, they're picking up the water. lessons. Yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm sure Ambassador contributed significantly, so please, good job. Give it up for Ambassador <laughs> one more time. All right, Thank yay. Uh, okay, we'll go to Alfred Ajabing. Alfred, if you can come in now with your question. All right, thank you very much, Ambassador, for your contribution to the development agenda of Ghana and I particularly who have interest in agriculture would love to contribute to you for your efforts in the north and also for boosting the food system of Ghana. Recently um, Mr. Anthony Falls was in the country and we welcome him, the US Secretary in charge of transportation and um, there are a lot of disengagements in Africa and I know U.S. have their own priority and also their, what they want to do in Africa. We are looking at, I have particular interest in agriculture and about 40% um, of um, agriculture are in small holding farming. What, what plans do you have in increasing the transportation infrastructure and ensuring that um, this smallholding farm farmers also contribute to the full system of Ghana. Well, as you said, our our, uh, our Secretary of Transportation, Mr. Uh, Fox, was uh, was here just the other day. A very short visit, but a very important one. Uh, he focused on a, uh, on signing a letter of intent with the Minister of Transport uh, to help uh, in this new training center uh, at uh, at the airport here in Accra, which will help train uh, Ghanaian. Uh, uh, people in the air industry as well as serve as a hub for uh, bringing in other uh, 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 people involved in the aviation industry including for example simulators for pilots etc. Uh, on the actual uh, we're, we're willing to um, to assist uh, in, in whatever kind of need uh, that Ghana has. I know that the, in terms of uh, uh, railway and roads we have the expertise in the United States. GE is a is one of the companies that has had discussions about improving the railway situation. Uh, we have not, uh, there have been a few proposals for American companies to come in on infrastructure in terms of roads, but um, uh, I don't think that a lot has come, uh, you know, a lot of has come out of those discussions. In terms of the ports and in terms of uh, maritime uh, shipping, I think we're, uh, we have American companies who are uh, investing right now and are looking to invest in uh, upgrading the ability of, of, of Ghana to service uh, ships and to get goods uh, from the port here to the rest of Africa. So I think bit by bit we're taking a look at it sector by sector and I think that the um, cooperation uh, between our two countries in this area of transportation uh, is a critical one and I look to see uh, a lot of progress in the future. 
All right. Thank you very much, Alfred. I'm sure the two of you will still be online with us. I'll go for some uh, questions that came in on Twitter and other social media platforms. This one here from Savior Mensa says, Nanaba, please ask the ambassador how long it will take you or take me, I'm sure in your position, you're talking for yourself, to acquire a student visa or a visa, just a public visa. Uh, how long? Uh, I, I can't tell whether or not you've uh, you've applied or whether you're um, you want to apply. Uh, usually, our our wait time is is very brief uh, here at the embassy. Uh, as you know, we're we're experiencing a current technical problem, uh, not only in Ghana but throughout the world, because of a of a, of a technical glitch at a very very critical part of our um, consular machinery in Washington. We're hoping that that will be fixed by early next week, and we regret the uh, the discomfort and the inconvenience it would cause to not only Ghanaians uh, but people around the world who want to travel. But normally, once the uh, once you do your once you go online to apply for a, a visa, uh, the, the 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 wait time for an interview is very short. It's been as short as two or three days uh, most of the time. Of course, we're in the very high uh, summer season now when travel is is very popular so it could take uh, longer but our, I can assure you that uh, our consular staff uh, is working as hard as they can to always reduce that waiting time between the time that you apply and the time that you have your interview Right, so Savia, you've had your question answered there. Uh, Prince Gale has a very interesting comment here for you. Every ambassador is good so far as you don't force us Ghanaians to legalize homosexuality Interesting question. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, we, you know, the, the question of, of gay and lesbian rights and, and, and transgender and, and same-sex marriage is one that uh, is continuing to be uh, uh, contested uh, in the United States. But I think the, uh, the trend of history certainly now in the United States is that uh, this is not going to be a, a major issue uh, for us anymore. We have recognized or we have come to the conclusion as a country that this is a, a human right. That is the ability uh, that is the the ability for someone to choose who they should love is a fundamental uh, human right and that it should be protected under the law. So that when we talk about this issue whether it's here or Uganda or anywhere else in the world uh, where the values of that particular country don't are not consistent with those in the United States, we will look at it as an issue of human rights and law. We do not intend to, to trample on the, uh, the cultural norms or the social norms of any society, but we would ask you to take a hard and good look at the standard by which we judge or by uh, the conclusion that we have come to as a society about the right of a person uh, to love uh, whom they choose, and to uh, to marry that person if they so choose. Okay. The next question here is from David um, Isiama. He's actually got three questions. The first one, uh, he says, now that he's been ambassador to a number of countries, including one other African state, what direction and vision will the next ambassador need in order to support U.S. national interest and Ghana's public interest? As we started the conversation with, the, the relationship between our two countries is solid. It's based on shared values. My uh, successor, when he or she arrives here, uh, uh, doesn't have to make uh, much, uh, much more of a, a change in direction uh, and I would argue can just continue along the path that I've gone as I continued along the path of my predecessor. This is a, uh, I'll call it, uh, for want of a better word, an easy place for someone to be ambassador because the warmth of the people here, uh, the uh, the sympathy that we have between our two peoples, uh, and the commitment on both sides to, to mutually respect each other, and the commitment certainly of the United States to uh, to help Ghana in every way that we can. So I don't uh, I I think that the vision that any ambassador uh, coming here would bring is what can we do to even to build on the record of our predecessors to make Ghana even a better place. Okay, uh, David's second question is about um, unemployment. I think he's already touched on that uh, very much. Um, the third one is agriculture and uh, he also talked about that so I'm sure David your questions have been answered. I'll go to another question here 
from Mer Mer Mary Aram Ashinio, who's a 2015 Mandela Washington Fellow. And uh, the question is, um, well, she says, I've been thinking about developing a functional health system for prisoners in Ghana that meets WHO standards. I was therefore happy to follow Joy FM's documentary about the living standards of prisoners in Ghana. What are your thoughts on this, please? Are you concerned with prison conditions? I'm not. Uh, I, I don't really have a lot of information about the uh, uh, the health condition uh, of prisoners, but obviously uh, these are these are human beings that have uh, obviously crossed some kind of red line in terms of their behavior. That doesn't mean that they're not entitled to uh, the most basic of uh, of human needs, you know, food, shelter, and uh, and health care. Uh, our main concern uh, with the Ghanaian uh, uh, prison system. Uh, which we've documented in, uh, publicly is the fact that uh, a lot of times prisoners are are, are held uh, for a long period of time before they're actually charged or or brought to justice uh, in a, in a trial. Uh, but I, I certainly think that uh, that's an enviable uh, kind of goal for you to have uh, to, because at the end of the day, these are human beings um, uh, that need that are that should be accorded at least a minimal. You know, uh, healthcare needs, uh, even as they are in jail. All right. Uh, the next question is from Ebenezer Yao Agbonyo, uh, who's asking Is there any aid ready for youth and peer educators in rural Ghana? Well, I, 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 as I, I we've just, uh, we, we have several, yeah. yeah, we have several programs in terms of education. We, we've built uh, uh, several uh, facilities, uh, we've, we've uh, assisted in uh, teacher training. And uh, like I said, we, we've, in, we've inaugurated a new program uh, for the elementary um, uh, school as well. Okay. Um, I'll go to health care. Hajia Sahada to Idris uh, wants to comment on health care employment. And she says, is there, okay, I guess I'll just skip that one. Is there a way to increase the system so that it can employ more health workers and in turn care for more in need. I think you've already commented. Yeah, I mean, our our, our goal is to help uh, improve the uh, the health system of the country. Uh, I I can't speak to the issue of you know hiring people because that's not really our our yeah, our bailiwick. We want to improve the health system, and we hope that in the course of improving the health system that more people will be brought on and trained to do those uh, those kind of procedures. Okay. I have a very interesting one here for you from Stephen Atropia. How does the U.S. ensure Ghana pays the loans the U.S. lends to it promptly to promote financial discipline? Uh, well, I, I, we, we set, uh, you know, like any other commercial enterprise, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we set up conditions. Uh, for example, uh, on our, um, uh, either with OPIC-assisted uh, get loan guarantees or with Exim Bank, there are very strict conditions and very strict dates uh, by which uh, uh, these uh, these funds must be paid. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, Ghana, uh, the Ghanaian government is aware that uh, conditions of uh, default are, are very serious uh, blot on any nation's record. So they've been uh, pretty good about uh, uh, about uh, repaying. But we do it through strict conditionality and strict timing uh, requirements. Okay. Now, uh, so if you have any more questions and you're watching us right now, uh, we're still hanging out with the outgoing U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Ambassador Jim Kretz. Uh, he's been here for three years already. He came so fast. Time flies. Mm -hmm. When you're having fun. You did have fun, didn't you? I had you? a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of it. Yeah. Did you try any Ghanaian food? Uh, all of it. All much. of it? Yeah. All of Which it? Which one was yeah. your favorite? Oh, um, uh, red, red. Red, red. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually going to have that for and lunch. Kelly Willey, of and Kelly Willie. You love the Kelly uh, Willie. Willie spicy? Good. Very spicy. Yeah, yeah, but not too soggy as well. No, no, Try. not soggy, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Very interesting. Anyway, I, I want us to you know, lighten up the conversation a bit. Um, uh, when you look at arts and entertainment, of course, you mm -hmm. see uh, the U.S. also leading in that uh, particular sector a lot. I'm sure you, you, you went to a lot of our arts uh, yes. uh, mm -hmm. programs sure. in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Which one was your favorite? The um, there was a, a joint pro there was a joint cultural program uh, between a Japanese group and a Ghanaian group, and they did they did a joint uh, music mm -hmm. uh, at the National Theater, which was really just spectacular, blending uh, the two mm -hmm. together. I thought that was really quite remarkable. You enjoyed it very much. Any favorite Ghanaian musician? Oh, I can't name them. I, 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 well, I, we, well, we had it our last July Fourth. Uh, yeah, 
Riala. Riala. Riala was really She's very sensational, special. isn't she? And there she? was another group that we had uh, with the drums, the... Uh, I can't think it of it. It must be name. one of the cultural groups. Yeah. Big Shot. Z Big Shot. Big Shot. We're fantastic. You, you enjoyed it. Yeah, a lot of talent here in this yeah. country. Did you yeah. learn any Ghanaian dance? Uh, Azunto, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it? I can embarrass myself very well. Really? Do you want to try it right now? <laughs> no, 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 right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've, done it. I've embarrassed myself enough. <laughs> You've done it enough, yeah, right? Several times. Yeah. It. But were you shocked at the way Azunto caught up? Not, Not at all. Ghana, it's a, it's a popular. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, look, it's, it it feels good. It's uh, yeah. you know, you, you get the motion. It's got a nice beat. It's got a lot of movement. Uh, it's terrific. Uh, really. Yeah. yeah. Um. Two years ago, I had a friend who worked at the embassy here, and uh, his time was up. He had to go, and he was so sad that. Oh, I love Ghana, the sun. Now I'm going back to the U.S. He wasn't mm -hmm. even sure where he was going next. And do you get the same feeling? About leaving Ghana and yeah, no, about I, going back to the U.S. Yes. State Department. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I, I, we've had a very good time here. Yeah. I, the, the weather is, is a little difficult at times, but the uh, I play golf and I, um, uh, I play tennis every day with these very good Ghanaian players. Uh, so we've been to the beach several times. Mm -hmm. We've had a we've had a very very comfortable, uh, a wonderful life here. So there is uh, certainly a, a tinge of regret. Uh, that we're leaving at this particular point. Yeah, you miss Ghana a lot. I think we will. I, I think it'll hit us when we get on the plane. <laughs> and you're leaving only next week. Is that week. between now and next week? What else are you doing? Are you still? I'm doing, doing a lot of farewell calls on all the different uh, ministers and the former presidents, and um, I'll see President Mahama again. I hope next week for an official uh, event, and um, getting ready for our own. Uh, 4th of July celebration yeah. on June 25th. So it's a very busy time and obviously uh, a lot of recommendations and evaluations for people before I go. Okay. I want us to look at the power of social media. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you don't usually find uh, top diplomats like you, you know, engaging so many people on social media. Mm -hmm. And you've done it in such fashion mm -hmm. that it's highly commendable. Well, thank you. Yeah. Is there a particular reason why you chose to communicate a lot with Ghanaians online? Well, t to be honest, I, I think that the um, uh, my colleagues uh, throughout the world, American ambassadors, uh, some of them have really taken to uh, social media even on a daily basis. Uh, I, I have not. I, I, I like the media. I like to do it uh, from time to time. Uh, and I, I think it's, it's very valuable to do it this way because you reach a lot of people. But I've, I've been more of the old school, in effect, because I like to um, uh, uh, interact with people personally one-on-one. -on -one. That's why I've enjoyed these, um, uh, these events where I can speak and then talk to people after. Uh, but I, I, I think it's a powerful tool, and uh, if, it, uh, if it helps to um, you know, improve or reconfirm the image of the United States in a particular country and show that we care about the, uh, the people here, uh, it's fine. Uh, I've chosen to do it at select times. Uh, I think uh, I could have probably done it more, uh, and I probably, if I had it to do over again, I would have done more. But uh, uh, this, you know, this is what's happened, and uh, I, I think the times have been very, very, um, uh, uh, you know, contributed to a good image of the states. I saw that on our uh, Facebook, in terms of a lot of people watch the. Um, the, the tape of my uh, ceremony with the president, mm. and there were uh, hundreds, I think, uh, if not thousands of mm. comments about uh, myself and my role as ambassador. So I think I've reached a lot of people. And uh, so whatever I've done, I think it, it appears to have worked. Mm. And you've got yeah. a lot of fans, too. Uh, lot of, a lot of fans. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm sure the two gentlemen online right now with Yao and then... Um, Alfred, are also to some of your biggest fans, two of your uh, biggest fans. And uh, before I let the two of you go, and before we wrap up, we just have a few minutes to 12. Sure. Um, what would be your advice for your online community, for the people who look forward every morning to read from Ambassador Kretz? You mean from uh, Ghanaians? Yes, Ghanaians. Uh, I would say, look, you, you have a, a marvelous country. You're rich in resources. You're rich in... Uh, both people and, and mineral resources, you have a very bright future. I would just say that you, you as time goes on, you need to find ways to, uh, to really uh, participate uh, as citizens of your country at the grassroots level and at the district level and certainly at the, at the national level because the more of you that participate and make your voices known as to what kind of country you want, 
the more the politicians will listen to you and the more that the outcome will be according to the will of the uh, people in Ghana. And you've got, you're smart enough, you're aware of what's going on, you just need to find how to channel that voice into something uh, very productive. Yeah, and social media, it's, it's, it's powerful. I mean, when you if, when used positively, sure. but there've been some downsides as mm -hmm. well. Sure. Yeah. No, one one has to be careful. I mean, we've had some instances in our own embassy where it's been, uh, it has not been used to to good effect. And a lot of times, uh, I mean, tweet tweeting is fine. I I prefer to, even on emails, to be very careful in terms of my thought and to take time and everything else. That's why the while tweeting is fine, I, I have not taken to that particular social media because I like to give some thought mm -hmm. to what I say. But it's fine. If people find that that's a way to communicate, um, uh, good for them. Uh, it's just that, uh, it, like you say, it can be used for, uh, for, for bad purposes or can have unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. But just think about what you say and then everything will be fine. Okay. So would you encourage your uh, successor, for instance, to continue with the work you've done online with this community? Sure, I th uh, sure. And I, uh, whether he or she, uh, depending on what they're comfortable with, you don't want somebody on, uh, you know, on social media who, who can't communicate. <laughs> I mean, so let's, uh, <laughs> let's look at the strengths of an individual and let's look at the purpose for which uh, it's designed and then tailor your particular interest in, in your particular uh, activities in social media to the, you know, what, what, how best you can do your job. Okay. And um, did you learn any languages? No, I didn't, unfortunately. I'm too old. None yeah. at all? Yeah. Not even a word? Aquaba. <laughs> <laughs> Dumsor. Uh, Dumsor. <laughs> the energy crisis. Um, yes, exactly. You, I mean, I'm sure your staff talked about this a lot. Yes. Uh, energy crisis. Right. Uh, it's not a very pleasant discussion, is it? Uh, it's not, but we're, uh, again, we, you know, we have a, a project, our MCC project is going to help revamp the, the electrical pro uh, system here in Ghana, and I think that with oil and gas coming online, I think things will be, uh, will be positive in a, in, in a few months to come. Okay. And we understand that we have a, a birthday. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's such uh, a surprise. We want to thank you so much, Nana Awa. Right. Oh, thank my you. God. <laughs> We're all going to sing? Sure. Right. Make a wish. <laughs> um, Would you please reserve my cake? <laughs> mm, okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Happy thank birthday. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, this is, um, this is a, a surprise, actually. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can have some, uh, Alfred and... No, yeah. but that's no. not fair. Come on, <laughs> give us some. Right. Uh, all is fair in love and war. Well, yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Okay, thank you. I have to say thank you uh, to uh, both of you for joining us uh, live. And also, for those who sent us questions, I'm sure we'll send uh, a message of gratitude. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. okay. So well, that's where we have to draw the curtain okay. down. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. It was very good. Taking yeah. an hour of your yeah. visit schedule yeah. to be with us here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Covered a lot of ground. Yes. Yeah, sure.